Among our most basic programmings is survival. The need to exist in the same coherent construct, to maintain one's mental form, even if this is volatile, is so automatic and deeply ingrained that is the foundation impulse to so many higher mental level proce processes that our brain runs uh, daily. Of course, that knowledgeable of this, the system and its wardens, its very operating system, the aka Demiurge, enforces social conditions that seek to keep us harnessed by two complementary factors. On one side we have to remain tempted and so attached to the form, and on the other we have to be threatened by something real or imaginary to be willing to go through the grinder that feeds the system while remaining an active food source for them. So temptation and threat, pleasure and pain, power and submission, these all play a very important part in our inner mental programming with which we were created. One of the results of this forced and enforced dual stimuli is the need that arises within our mental complexes for security, that is, an assurance of the continuation of whatever temptation, pleasure and power our mental complexes have become attached to, and for safety, that is, a guarantee to be safeguarded from the threats that could potentially terminate both the security of the attachments or even the very perceived existence of the mental complex itself. Simplifying, the need for security is the need to protect that which is perceived as pleasant, even if it's merely misperception, while the need for safety is the need to protect not only that mentioned security, but also ultimately to protect the continuation of the conceptual program or application, metaphorically speaking, that we identify as ourselves, within the reality sense, of course, that is running in the operating system of the Demiurge, which is itself running in the computer of Gaia, that is the, again, metaphorical, fallen goddess that created immaturely. I emphasize this again, these concepts are used for the purpose of communication of meaning and are never literal or true in themselves. Their function is to enable the receiver of the concepts to understand, through the metaphors, what is otherwise incomprehensible and inaccessible to our minds within the program of reality. By going through the processing of myths, always made up of metaphors and related tools, such as parables, the reality program can initiate processes that make conflict with what is set and create a gap in the reality program, so to speak. Because reality always tries to remain continuous within time, as was addressed in the previous contemplation on meaning. And that interval in the program is then used by truth, that is normally ineffable, to communicate knowing into the program. The individual program then has to fit, in, fit it in the best possible because it is still, regardless, existing here as a program and will have to continue doing so until its time is up. Therefore, under this light, we can understand that the need for security and safety are natural in the sense that they stem from the nature of reality to which our conceptual programs belong. And so they are needs that keep running, in one way or another, while our programs run in the reality. They can run in, on other realities too, but that's a different subject for some other time. Now our true selves know of these needs, and take them into consideration because they are part of what we are as beings of this reality, these needs. So there is no need for forgiveness for us to be so-called sinners because that is what we are programmed to be, in alignment with or in the image of, if you prefer, the reality that created us as that. To exist here is to sin, so to speak, because our very basic program is 
sin, as reality itself is the original sin we are copies of. Metaphors. Anyway, given that our true self knows of our predicament, once a connection is established, it will always attempt to develop a relationship of trust. I would until recently call it faith, but someone recently changed my mind on the use of that word. Isn't that right, David? Now, that trust allows to soothe these needs, both for security and safety, and also to assist the program to move beyond their boundaries and reality. A middle path, again, between the indulgence and the discipline, mentioned previously in the indulgence contemplation. This brings me now to a dream my girlfriend had and that she wrote down, given its significance. It is a short telling of what she remembers, and yet, if one is able to get in the flow, or is it go in the flow? Can't remember, as a manner of speaking, and perform the alchemical processes of understanding and realization, it can be worth entire libraries of knowledge, because it is knowing instead. So, in her own words and voice, this contemplation will wrap up with her telling of this significant dream between the natural needs of security and safety and the true love and trust that balance them from the ineffable middle path. Here goes. This is a story about a dream. The kind of dream you have after you fall asleep after you fall in the trap of scanning your scars, your scares, and your scarcity. Past, present, future, always there as long as you allow them to keep you company. In the dream, I know the world is about to end. I am alone, yet surrounded by so many. Sure, this is happening, again. On one hand, I'm not too worried. On the other, I get anxious about things I must gather, precious things, things I might need, and a place I need to get to to stay safe in case I stay behind. A mob of people is herded around in this old abandoned school building. I feel I need to get out of there. I can see their bodies in motion through frosted glass windows, like ghosts. I have to get out of here. I have places to be and stuff to get. Women and men have been separated, and I need to get to my man. I walk through the male mob, where their leader is trying to teach them how to prepare and defend themselves, teaching them about a simple punch, and as I watch, I almost get hit by one. I have to get out of here. This is not for me. I hear a voice. As long as you keep that door closed, you'll be okay. It's a white door with blue rims. I won't use the door. My anxiety is building up. I might not have much time left. Or is it right? Because I needed to cross the river to get home, as so often happens in dreams, I find myself on a bridge. Tall, big, red bridge, surrounded by mist. I can't see the beginning or the end of it. I can't even see the water underneath it. I am in the middle of it. I kneel and look down at this white sheet of paper with four red circles on it. What am I going to do now? Then, from my right side, this feeling comes over and lets me know. You silly. Why do you worry so about what you might need and where, whether you'll suffer? You'll always be taken care of, remember? Stop worrying. As I realize that it is true, I just think, of course, how stupid of me. 